All right, today we're going to do a tarp motor replacement, and I'm uh, going to try and use this Byers tarp motor. This was 300 bucks versus the pull tarps, which was almost 500 bucks. So uh, hopefully everything here is going to line up and fit. But just want to see, show you what uh, what comes in the kit. Get a new chrome cover. I mean, it's just uh, just plastic like the old one, but a uh, new one. And then there is the tarp motor and some new mounting hardware and some instructions. So I'm just going to go through a few steps. It's pretty straightforward to change this, but I'll just show the steps just in case it uh, might help you out. All right, I'm going to start here by taking off these two nuts. That's for the power that goes to the motor. I already got these loose. Um, these are not live as long as the switch is not depressed, but the second the switch is depressed, those will be live. Um, so you might want to consider just disconnecting your battery just so you don't have any sort of... Uh, uh, short circuit by those being disconnected. Alright, next I'm going to take out these three bolts here and uh, before you do this step, real important, make sure you have your tarp arms all the way extended um, because the, the spring will try and really rapidly whip the tarp and the roller as soon as you start unloosening these bolts so um, don't want anything like that to happen where you might uh, get your fingers pinched or anything like that. So make sure you start this with the tarp all the way rolled out. All right, so I removed the uh, three mounting bolts. It allows me to move the whole tarp, motor assembly, and roller to position where I can get uh, this nut off this bolt. Um, a lot of times these bolts are slightly bent, so after you get the nut off, um, I already started loosening this one, you may need to tap this bolt out with a punch and a hammer um, shouldn't be too stuck, but sometimes it's more than just it will kind of release or or you can just use a wrench on that side and turn it out. All right, we've gone and did reverse steps and got this thing uh, mounted, the bolt through the shaft, three bolts to hold on the motor to the plate, two screws to hold on the cover. When you get to the electrical connections, uh, it, it doesn't really matter which way these go in the sense that they're not marked because it's all dependent on how your truck was wired so the fastest way to do this just connect it run the tarp system and if the uh, the convention on the on the switch matches the way it's going you're good if it's opposite then you just flip these leads so um, flipping these leads changes in and out for the tarp uh, orientation relative to the switch nomenclature so um, that's why these they did put this nut red, but, but really red switches every time you hit the switch. So I just wanted to explain that. And then I did want to show here, I've got the tarp motor actually facing out. For whatever reason, they always mount these things with the motor sticking up, which the taller you make your truck, the more likely it's going to get hit. Um, if I would have had my choice, I would have liked to actually have the whole assembly pointing down. But the, uh, the goofy way this thing was built, there's angle iron sticking outside of the bin. Uh, that's not the right way to mount this system. Um, it should be cut to the width of the bin. It shouldn't stick out farther than the bin. You'd actually trim your roller and make this all to fit. But uh, the integrators took a shortcut here. And so I can't actually move this so it points down. Um, and that would then uh, decrease the likelihood of this getting hit, but at least now it's pointing out and so it's not uh, the tallest point on the truck anymore. So hopefully that was helpful for you and this buyer's part does fit and so uh, if you want to try and save a few bucks, um, it, it does fit versus the pull tarps. Uh, I know there's some cheaper ones out there on Amazon, but uh, at least buyer's is a respected name and uh, you can buy it at a bunch of stores where it's easy to make exchanges or returns. So I uh, just want to share that information. One more quick thought, um, if you don't have any sort of cable protectors, the little caps that would, boots, weather boots that would slide over your studs, um, what I'd recommend is taking some silicone sealer and just gooping these all over so that it keeps weather out from these studs and, and uh, prevents corrosion going back into your cables and just make sure that the system uh, works as long as it can in the shape it's in. So, um, again, put some type of silicone sealer on these studs if you don't have any weather boots.